I don't know about you lot, but where I live, it's got very cold all of a sudden, and that means I'm going to have to put on a scarf. Um, this, that's not what I had in mind. What up team, lovely to have you aboard. Today we're going to be talking about scaling, inverse scaling and doing a circular reveal. Now a circular reveal is the kind of effect where you have some content in a circle and as you roll over your mouse it kind of expands a little bit but the content stays at the same size so it's like a mask reveal, a circular mask reveal. You might think you might do a clip animation but a clip animation will paint on every frame and painting every frame is typically a bad thing for performance. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to try and do it with scaling. So in this approach, we definitely have at least two elements. We have the outer element that we scale up and the inner element. And the reason we use scales is because those can be hardware accelerated. Those typically are composited effects. So to begin with, let's pop in a bit of content onto our page. We're going to do a div and I'm going to put this as a circular reveal. Now, admittedly, I could use custom elements here, but I don't want to do that just because I want to make it super clear what the content is, what I'm actually going for, the concepts rather than saying, oh, you know, learn some custom elements. I mean, I do have another video and the video that's coming out next week with MPJ. Just saying, there may be some custom elements in there. It's very exciting. Anyway, so we have our circular reveal element. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in another one inside of that called circular reveal content. And in there, I'm just going to pop in an image source equals, and it's going to be a photo of me. So I'm going to do alt equals Paul Lewis. Could have been a lot ruder about myself there. Decided not to be. Well done me. So if we go across to the browser and take a look at that, you'll see a photo of me. Quite large, really. So let's go into the CSS. And what we can do here is we can start putting in some circular reveal stuff. Okay. Oh, by the way, what I have at the top of this is I have a little bit that's just going to set some uh, paddings and margins to zero, width and height 100%. And I'm going to set the body to be a uh, flex box, uh, display flex, align item center and justify content center. Simple way of uh, vertically and horizontally aligning to the middle. So that our image showed up in the middle of the page there. So the circular reveal itself. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hard code this today uh, rather than letting the image define the width and height of the circular reveal. You could do that. I'm just going to do it this way today because that's how I feel like doing it today. So with that in place, we're going to then say circular reveal image. We're just gonna grab a hold of it and we're just gonna say width 100% like that. Now, when we look at that in the browser, you can see that that's a little bit smaller, which is kind of what I wanted here. And I can add a border radius of 50% onto the containing element, which will do exactly nothing to the image. And the reason it does nothing to the image is because the image is not uh, constrained to that border radius of the outer element. For that to work, for it to be clipped by the outer element into a circle, we need to set the outer element, circular reveal, to overflow hidden, like so. Now when we do that, aha, our image has been contained and constrained and cropped and clipped and all of those things that we want it to be. Good. So what do we do now? Well, what we want to do is we want to scale this up and down. And typically you might think, well, I could do this with uh, CSS animations. That would seem like a good thing. And you might think so, uh, but you'll probably run into challenges. And the reason you'll run into challenges is when you start doing easing. So imagine our circular element, our outer element is scaling up and uh, it's doing so linearly. So without any easing in or easing out, what will happen is the animation will go just fine and we can do a similar kind of uh, inverse animation for the content. So if it's going from say 100% to 200%, uh, we can set our inner element to go from 100% to 50%. And because it's linear, the two will cancel each other out perfectly. However, if we add any easing onto the outer element, we have to counter ease the inner element. And that is really, really difficult to do. And if you get it wrong, it'll kind of jitter and wobble and it won't look very nice at all. So in these situations, what I typically do is I use JavaScript for that kind of animation. So let's do that. We have a circular reveal JavaScript here and I'm just going to go straight in with an iffy. I'm not going to do anything fancy with you know classes or 
anything like that. I'm just going to go straight to writing the code that we need here. So I'm going to say const element. I'm just going to grab the circular reveal query selector. Oh, this one here. Look, there we are. And I want cir cir circular reveal. There we are. I'm going to grab the inner one as well. And now we need to decide what we want the animation to be like. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to do some pointer over and pointer out uh, to be able to capture when we roll our mouse or our touch on the element itself. So I'm going to do element.add event listener pointer over. And we're going to do something there. And element.add event listener pointer out. And we're going to do something else here too. So what are we going to do? Well, let's first of all, let's console.log just to make sure it's working. Pointer over and then pointer out, like so. Okay, pointer, oh, got pointer out, pointer over, pointer over, there we are. Glad we checked, pointer over and pointer out. Great. Now I feel like when we roll over, we probably want that to be a mouse hand cursor thingy. So let's go with that. We're going to say cursor pointer like that. Marvelous. Now, what we want to do is we want to do the animation. And typically what I suggest with these kinds of animations is that you use a fairly straightforward uh, dynamic animation where you ease on the fly. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to have to set up a few values here. So let me do that. Let element scale equals uh, sort of, let's say 0.6, something like that. Okay. And we'll do a const outscale, do 0.6. Let's do that there. And we can say, yeah, we'll do that, outscale. There we are. And then we'll say let inner scale equals one over element scale. Always the same. So this is the, the way we offset this. And now what we want to do is we want to set up some kind of animation loop. And if you're doing this in a kind of performant way, you'll only animate when there's some animation to do. And when I put this onto aerotwist.com later, I will make sure that I tidy this up because right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an animation frame loop that just runs and runs and runs. So bear with me while I do this. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll pop in a request an animation frame. There we are. Um, we'll call update and we need to define what update is. So const update is a function that we're going to call. And inside of there, we're going to request another animation frame with update again. What are we going to do inside of here? Well, the first thing to do is to update our element scale. So we'll say element scale plus equals. And this is the way that you do this dynamic animation. If you've never done it before, it assumes that you're not doing animations based on time values, but you're doing them based on something like a consistent frame rate and that you're going to have an, an even tick firing and that you want to do something based on that interval, that even tick. And we got that through request animation frames. So um, we could do this more robustly with time, but this as a, a quick and easy way, little thing to throw in your skill bag, as it were, element scale plus equals. And then we take the difference of where we want to be. So that's the uh, some kind of target scale. So that's where we're going to go. Um, minus the current value that we have for element scale multiplied by some easing. So we've got a couple of things that we need to define here. One is the target scale. So we're going to say, let target scale equal the out scale. And now what we'll do is we'll actually do this. Uh, we'll initialize our element scale to the target scale and our inner scale to one over element scale. It will all become clearer, I'm sure, shortly. We also need to define what easing is. And this is how aggressive or how um, pushy the animation is going to be, how easy it is. And I'll show you what happens when we change that value in but a moment. So easing, let's start that out at 0.1. Okay, so we've got this animation element scale plus equals where we want to be minus where we are multiplied by some easing value. And now what we need to do is we need to update our scales. So what we'll do is we will say element dot style dot transform equals and then we'll do a template string. We'll say scale and it will go for element scale, like so. And then we need to do uh, inner dot style dot transform equals inner scale, like so. Now we need to update inner scale every time we update the element scale. So we'll say inner scale equals one over the element scale. So as our element scale changes, the inner scale changes in a an inverse kind of way. 
Finally, we need to now actually do something with our pointer over and our pointer out. And all we need to do here is we just need to update what the target scale is. So we've got the target scale. So when you roll over, we need some kind of in scale value, which doesn't exist yet. So let's do that. And we'll say const in scale equals one. So that when you roll over, we're going to scale up to one. Or we're going to set the target to one, which the, the request animation frame loop will go through and kind of try and ease us up to that value. And then when you roll out, we will update to the out scale. Now, all being well, yeah, there you go. So what we've got here is we've got an, uh, an animation on a scale that's making our element get bigger. And then what we've got is we've got a counter scale or counter animation. Let me show you a couple of things. So if we didn't style the inner element, the contents, it would just get smaller and bigger like that, you see? But it is because we have this counter scale on our contents that we get this masking circular reveal. Marvelous. The other thing we might feel is that this animation is just a bit too slow, a little bit too pondersome. And that's where this easing value comes in here because we can change this up to say something like 0.3 and it'll be a lot faster. Like so, there we are. So that's the JavaScript side, but we can do a little bit more on the CSS side as well. What we'll do is we will add ourselves a circular reveal, say an after, and we're gonna set content to some kind of content for it. I'm just gonna put my name in there because it's a picture of me. Imagine this was something like a conference site with like your speaker images or something. So we'll say position absolute, change that to absolute, background red, uh, width 100%, height 100%, left zero, top zero, there we go. Now we get red, and that's not really what we want, but do bear with me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just grab this here, over here, and we're gonna set the color to white. So they're grabbing that uh, flex box stuff, we'll put the text in the center. Let's set a font size as well while we're here to 40 pixels. And there we are, that's that. Now what we'll do is we'll fade it in so that when you hover over or when it's got focus, perhaps we'd also do that there. Let me do that. Hover. We're going to say opacity one. And by default, opacity zero. And then we're going to set a transition on opacity 0 0.3 seconds cubic bezier. 0, 0, 0.31 and now as you hover over you see that fades in with it um what we'll do though is we'll change the background and i really like this in vs code we can just come over here we can grab a color that we think might work i'm going to go with this kind of slightly purplish color drop the opacity down save that and go again oh yeah let me just bring that opacity back up a little bit there we are Bring that up there. What we'll also do is we'll also add a little bit of a transform on the bottom of that. Like that. We're going to turn transition on transform. And we will add a slight transform on this. So transform, translate, Y, 10 pixels. And then we'll do to zero pixels when you hover. Do we like that? I don't think we do. Let's do something different. Let's do let's do a rotation. Rotate 180 degrees to a rotation of zero. This probably will be a little bit too much. That's not too bad. Okay, let's just do like 10 degrees just to give it just a little bit of movement. See, there you are. That's that's better. Slightly better. Just a little bit of movement goes a long, long way in these things. So now we've got an animation that works with JavaScript, that works with CSS, so we can mix and match a little bit here. It's dynamic in the ways that we can kind of roll in and out really quickly and it'll behave as we expect. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. That helps me a bunch. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you lovely folks on the flip side. Check out this custom scarf that Mariko made me. Look, it's, it's me, it's me. It's from when I did a show called Supercharged on the Chrome Developers YouTube channel. Uh, I don't do it anymore, Surma does it, and he does an amazing job of it. You should go and check it out. Subscribe if you haven't. I'm sure you would appreciate it.